Hi there, welcome back to Creatively Crafted Life. My name is Melanie. It is that time of the month where we smash our stash. A collaboration hosted by Bourbon Creeks Crafts. Oh, and it is a hashtag collaboration, which means if you want to check out what everybody else is doing, click on the hashtag in the description or title of this video to see what everybody was up to this month. This was free choice and uh, I'm behind, <laughs> no shock there. I am behind on my projects, so I decided to finish some projects up and work on some classes, and I have quite a bit to show you. I think I did pretty good this month. So the first little bit I'm gonna share with you are things that were left over from an in-person, I don't really wanna call it a crop because it was all classes. So an in-person event, let's call it that. <laughs> and I had to finish a few layouts and a mixed media piece. So this particular design is what we did in the class. I had a few pieces that still needed to be done and uh, added afterwards. And um, I wanted to purchase some frames. So I just bought these off of Amazon. I think they are perfect for this. And I actually bought two frames so I figured why not use the leftover supplies and create an additional project so this was one of my own design it features um, Tim Holtz products because this is a class taught by Paula Cheney so those are my two little home decor pieces we then had a scrapbook class that was taught by Janet, U Janet Eubanks for hip kit and there was a lot of fussy cutting, but you all know I love that, so that wasn't a problem. So I had a few few layouts to finish for that. So this was one of them. It featured those like dimensional flowers, which I love. <laughs> I don't love them on scrapbook layouts. So I'm not sure I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this one. If I'm gonna leave it as is or if I will take this off or maybe this will end up being a framed piece where I can take the glass off and then the dimension can just kind of shine through I don't know we'll see what happens on that one as you guys know I don't like to print photos and I even like to print photos for classes less than normal because I really want to know what the mood and feel of the layout is before I commit or bring photos to the class so I just put placeholders in I find a lot of times with these classes that they really try and use a lot of the product. And on this particular layout here, same class, it called for a whole bunch of flowers down this middle strip and it just was too much in my opinion. So I made it my own and left those out. This one here, I cut the paper wrong. <laughs> so I'm not always so good at following instructions and the design was actually originally supposed to be more this way. So I had to tweak things a little bit to make it work, but I think it still turned out pretty well. Now, for those of you that always worry about things like, you know, what happens if the words aren't appropriate, that kind of thing, I, like when you go to actually add the photos, I have no problems covering them up when the time comes. This one, we fussy cut out all these like scallops from the paper to make the scallop tart, which I think turned out super cute. Then the next thing I focused on was the SCT class from September and let me show you the cards I made from that. Okay, I think maybe we'll zoom in because there is a lot to go through and a lot of details that I think are kind of cool. Okay, so the first class was Crafter's Companion and um, their inks that kind of morph into different colors when you uh, water them down. These were not my favorite cards, to be honest. Um, the technique, while cool, I don't know. It's just a little bit messier. I think I like my stuff a little bit on the cleaner side, but they still turned out okay. Then we had, I think this was from Picket Fence, I think. And she had provided these pre-colored images as well as this background paper. Uh, there is a, was a stamp that was included with these images and I think the idea of the pre-coloring was just to help us get through the class with the different techniques. So this one featured um, some of their paste in the background which I thought was really pretty. This one we did some stenciling in the background first with some reactive inks and then applied water and then I don't know if you can see the shimmer on here but that's also covered with their paste over the entire backdrop so not through the stencil and again more of those images. 
And then this one, the background, you can see how super shiny it is. Um, we first of all made the background with some ink blending and then did some embossing paste on top, clear embossing. And then we added the stencil with their kind of glittery paste through it. Very cool. Um, and then uh, her design, she used a window die. I didn't have anything like that, so I made my own. So this is just a, an arch shape that I had, and then I just cut strips um, to make the panels for the window. Simon Hurley was there teaching one of his classes. Usually he has something to do with pace, um, which he did. <laughs> Uh, but this first card actually doesn't fe feature any pace. It has this stamped background, which is one of his pull apart rubber stamp kind of backgrounds, which was a lot of fun to play with. And these penguin stamps are so cute. I actually colored these with gel pens. I haven't done that in a long time, so it was kind of fun to pull those out. All the penguins were covered with gel pens. This is the background that we did with a combination of his what is it? It's called Astro Paste, I think, and some ink blending. <laughs> and this one, well, this one I was a little over, what's the right word? I didn't prep the stencil enough, so I had a little bit of glooping when it came to the stars or snowflakes. And then because it was so gloopy, I thought, what the heck, let's just go full on. And I just added a bunch of paste down at the bottom where the snow is. Now, this is not his paste. This is stuff from my stash. I just didn't feel like opening his jar when I had other stuff already open that was, while not the same, um, give a, gave a similar effect, right? So I was just trying to use what, what I have because if you all know and have watched past videos of mine, mixed media supplies, once they are open, they have a limited life. So that is why I did that. Concord in Ninth had a class, typical, you know, shaker card. The big thing was, uh, was how you make these backdrops. We're done with stencils and you can make all three um, focal points in one go with the stencil, which is kind of fun. Uh, this one, I seem to have a little problem gluing it on straight. <laughs> so if you've got any tips when gluing on um, panels with dimension, especially for shaker cards, let me know because I'd love to hear what those are. Here is another one featuring one of the, those focal points. Um, we were going for some of the splatters with the water on the reactive ink, and I actually um, had a couple big gloops, which, okay, it's fine, I can live with it. But then I somehow got some blue up here, and I'm pointing this out just so, you know, you know that mistakes happen, and there's always some way that you can mask it to some extent. So this looked like, you know, the sunset over water, and so I just drew, hand drew in some of these little birds or gulls to kind of mask that little bloop. Can you still see it? Yes, but it's not nearly as noticeable as it was before, and I was not starting the card over again. This was another one of those focal points that, or sentiments that get made with the stencil, and then we just colored some uh, white cardstock and die cut out the background shadow to make this layered element. And then I used some Hero Arts, um, I think it was Hero Arts or was it Spellbinders, um, little gems to kind of jazz that up. I'm wrong. These were from Tailored Expressions. Yeah, Tailored Expressions. Concord and Ninth has similar stuff, but that wasn't this in this case. Speaking of Concord and Ninth, uh, this one featured like a panel this background panel, um, which is really cool. Um, and then it does like these balloons and it has a stencil to do the cupcake, which is really cute. It also gave you this really cool die to cut out the center, which you'll see is focused quite a bit on here. I love that they showed how you could decorate the panel completely, or you could just use it as a background with kind of the texture. And then on this one, we use the stencil to do the congratulations with with a reboss with a resist technique where we stamp the congratulations in white or clear can't remember um, and embossed it. And then there's that center panel that you see featured on here, and I cut out from this one. MFTs was there, and I know they're undergoing um, some changes, so that was really nice to see. They mostly featured this die set with the different floral elements. This particular one is not your standard card, 
the card actually opens on the front. So what are your thoughts on a card like this? You know, it's not going to stand up for the user, but does that matter? I don't know. I'm not too sure what I think about that. I really love this mason jar with the sunflowers. I think that's so cute. We did a little stenciling in the background and then there was some pattern paper to play with. I really like that card. And this one, the idea behind it is a little bit more interactive. There is a belly band which comes off that features the focal point. And then the inside has kind of like this layered, this layered card element. And it has the saying, I hope you're okay, so you can write your message on it. I don't know that it's <laughs> quote unquote necessary, but it is an interesting card. I mean, you could easily just do this as a front card, right, with these different panels um, and not have that kind of zigzag fold, but something different. Very much Gina K Designs. We had some stamps and of course you'll see her black mat, which is kind of like her signature thing. We also had some stencils to do some masking in the background. So that was a lot of fun. She brought out an old technique. It was called kissing back in the day where you stamp texture or something on top of another stamp. So you can see in the leaves, they kind of have a textured pattern. And then on the flowers, they've got these little dots. That was really cute. It was nice to revisit a technique. And this was another one that had the same kind of idea. You'll see there's some texture on the leaves and on the petals. For Hero Arts, we did um, a resist technique as well. This kind of reminds me of, I think it was called Jacob's Coat or I can't remember what else. There, there's another name for it. Quite often it's done with a black background, but basically you layer your inks, stamp your images, apply a clear embossing powder, and then go over top. And in this one, we went over top with a stencil um, in a dark brown and then added even more color on top to kind of give that background look. And we also applied a little bit of water. Um, we made a bigger panel than this and then we used the extras for another card. So that other card was this one where we had three panels. Their design had the staggered. I liked them in a more um, straight fashion, but again, whatever, whatever you like would work. And then we just stamped the outline images on craft, which actually came from this card. For this one, we did some ink blending and stamping, die cutting, and then we die cut the images out of this panel as well. And so whatever came out, <laughs> we could use on this one. I hope that makes sense. Very simple cards, but I think very striking. So for this next one, we made three cards and there was a bonus, which I did actually complete. This was from, I think, LDRS. They had a 3D embossing folder. Um, and the idea behind with this was you did the ink paneling first, then you embossed, and then you went over with a similar color to kind of just touch the, the embossed pattern um, to kind of make it pop a little bit. So that turned out really cute. This is the same embossing folder, only we inked the folder and sprayed it with ink, uh, sprayed it with water and then ran it through. And then this card, I, I modified it slightly. Um, this was an embossed embossing folder that you had to basically paint with watercolor. And then you use like a wax or uh, some sort of rub on the top. So I had whatever it was in my stash. I can't remember who it's by um, Viva Crafts or Viva Decor or something like that. And then the idea was that you were supposed to take a black alcohol marker and color the background. Well, <laughs> mine didn't work out quite the way that I liked. So I ended up trimming this image out. So the embossed image out. And then I went with black around the edge so that there was no white edge showing and then matted that on black paper. And then I thought it still needed one other thing. So I took some gold foil cardstock and matted it again. And I really like how this one turned out. That same embossing folder, I did almost the exact same technique. I wasn't intending to cut it out, but again, I'm a sloppy crafter and so it didn't work quite the way that I had hoped. So this is that same gold paste that I had in my stash. Basically you emboss, rub the, the paste over top, but I ended up getting stuff everywhere. So I trimmed on a separate card. Now, 
you'll notice there's this like haze here. That's from my embossing powder, you know, to anti-static tool. And I don't know how to get rid of it. Do you guys know? I don't know. Maybe I was too heavy handed with it. So Lawn Fawn is usually a feature and they always deliver on cuteness. In this case, we had some Christmas cards. This was a, uh, a stencil. I believe they have a die set that looks very similar. Um, this was also a die. And then look at these little critters. Aren't they cute? The little mice. We also got some of their pattern paper. Um, this is all ink blended. And then the cute little mice, which were colored with alcohol inks and again more mice deck the halls all part of the stamp set and then just a portion of the um, stencil spellbinders you know they're known for their dyes and they have this really cute line i think it's called like field study or something like that and it's really kind of got that look of someone who goes out into nature and gets samples of plants and rocks and whatever you know that kind of thing and so it had like this thistle and this little floral element and this embossing folder that's kind of got like a leaf print on it. Um, the die has like this washi tape so that you could basically glue this into your journal. It's kind of what it was mimicking. All of this was cut out of cardstock and then I just added some ink blending on top of it to give it a little bit of dimension. I think that turned out pretty cute. Similarly, this is the same die as this only we um, cut out the stems twice and then there's like three elements of the florals um, two full and then I just cut out a third into little bits and pieces to kind of make it bigger this is that same embossing folder um, only it was ink blended before and then part of this die set had this really cute bow which I absolutely love and then I just strung this tag through through it. Now this last one um, really kind of highlights the idea behind this collection where it has like this magnifying glass, some scissors, there's the bow, a pencil, that kind of thing. And so then the way they had us do this was they line up the bow so it looks like it's been wrapped around. And when you open it up, you get another piece of the die cut set and then the pencil and then you could write your message in the inside. I love this so much that I think this is actually going to go in my art journaling and um, I'm just going to, you know, adhere it here, stick it in and then I can use the inside to do some sort of documenting. I really loved the scrapbook.com class and there I think they were tasked with coming up with some sort of pop-up idea. Um, we received one of their paper pads. It was a fall themed paper pad as well as these really cute critters. I believe you can buy them this set on their website. There were dies and there were stamps that went together and it also had some gold foiling in it. So it's got the little buddy on the front, but when you open this up, it forms a box and then you have a bear, a party bear in the middle. Now this is mounted I don't know if you can see that, but there's a piece of acetate that basically runs just along the back, probably about that big, that he's mounted to. And then there's some pattern cardstock in the back so that when you look through, you can see the patterns. And then, um, you know, I just added the sentiment and a little bit of more paper down at the bottom. I think that one is adorable. This one's not so much a pop-up, but still kind of cool. On the front, it looks like a normal card, but when you open it, you'll see that there's parts that are cut out and using that pattern paper for the background and then a space to align um, for your message that aligns with this front part. Now they didn't call for covering this, but you do see where the pieces are all glued and I thought this just finished it off, so I did add that on that side and I think they turned out that turned out really cute as well and then this last one again featuring their cardstock and this um, foiling paper I think all this foiling paper was from, from scrapbook.com too now that I think of it look how cute he is this was just I cut out of cardstock as well and then I just used some ink to blend him up and when you open this one up there is the typical little square pop-up and it has this fox with like an iridescent foiling on there. Isn't that cute? 
Okay, and then the last class that I completed, I did not complete all the classes. There was a few there that were mm, not my cup of tea, I guess, or not my style, and I did not feel like, you know, modifying them to make them work, so I just skipped over those, but still plenty to do out of this class. So the last one was Honey Bee Stamps, and I'm going to have to say, like, I'm really impressed with Honey Bee. I, this is, I think, the third or fourth set that I've gotten from them now. And I'm not usually a big die cutter with all little fussy bits because I just think they're complicated. While this is somewhat fussy, they actually do a really good job. I think they're well thought out. And so it's not that difficult to do, I guess is what I'm trying to say, is I don't mind them. I don't mind doing them. So in this in this card, they gave us the stamped or this pre-printed panel that had the wreath on it with the baking spirits bright. And then the class was to make all of these different baking um items. So, you know, from the piping bag to the little gingerbread cookies to the stars to the um, rolling pin, that kind of thing. I think this one turned out super cute. I also liked how they showed you it could be used for different things. So um, in this particular case, you know, we have all of the different elements, you know, on kind of a shelf as like maybe as a display shelf in your kitchen. And I love the saying, what's cooking? How great to send that to a friend as a different way to say, Hi, and then the star of the show, I think, was this particular die cut piece. It's a Hoosier, Hoosier cabinet, I believe is what they're called. And it can open up to show you what's on the inside. This is also now available for purchase, I believe. Um, and they've also added some add-ons. And so they have some additional kits. Like, uh, I know for sure they have a Christmas one. And I don't remember what the other one is. But super, super cute. So we had some pattern paper again from them with this brick background and then this this cabinet. Now this takes up a full card. Like this is a piece, like this is a <laughs> a statement. So they had us put the sentiment on the inside, which just says whisking you a sweet birthday, and then another one of those whisks um, to finish that card off. Whew! That was a lot of cards, you guys. <laughs> Well, that is what I made this past month for Smash Your Stash. I'm really glad to have gone through all of those items. I've got much more cards to send out and um, less stuff sitting around waiting to be used. Thank you so much for sticking around. Be sure to check out the other collaborators. I'm sure that they've all been busy this past month as well. And until next time, happy crafting.